Lakers fans. Did you seriously think we were going to win this game tonight against the Clippers? <laughs> I mean, did you see that 30-minute self filating ceremony the Lakers did before the game started? Come on, man. After that shit, I knew we weren't going to win. I mean, you fucking did the Clippers dirty for 30 damn minutes. Letting them just sit there and watch you guys just flaunt your rings around. LeBron James swaying, doing all this shit. And it's like, yeah, dude, I'm a Lakers fan. I love this ring ceremony. But the reality of this game coming in was the Lakers weren't really going to give a shit about opening night. And for the Clippers... When was the last time we saw them? They blew a 3-1 series lead, right? So, naturally, emotions are at an all-time high. You have to overcompensate for all the bullshit that you left from last season and coming into this season. So, when you tell me, oh my god, Paul George, amazing game, 33 points, that doesn't change the fact that he's still pandemic P. I'm not going to knock him for this game today that he put up. No. And certainly, the Clippers held the Lakers' balls all game long, especially in that first half. Holy shit. That first quarter, the Clippers got to a hot 22-point lead. And then that shit just kind of shrunk to a two-point lead by halftime. And you start wondering, as a Lakers fan, that, hmm. Okay, so for me, if we don't win this game, I'm totally fine with it. But if we win this game, good Lord, <laughs> the amount of hubris I would have would have been toxic, to, to say the least. But I guess thankfully for non-Lakers fans. Third quarter was a bit more of a rough and tumble battle, but by the fourth quarter, the Lakers kind of pooped themselves out. And you could see just this level of you know aggression with the Clippers that they had something to prove, and absolutely they do. But I'll tell you what, you know, anti Lakers fans, you know, actual Clippers fans, I don't even know if you guys actually exist, but and to any of you who are gonna doubt the Lakers all season long, because I mean we've seen the same pattern last season, right after opening night, the Clippers win. Oh my god, this is the best budget they ever. Oh, the Clippers are gonna make the The Lakers are shit. And the same narrative is gonna persist again. And I would tell everybody, eh, take the shit with a grain of salt. One game, and let's just look at some simple comparisons. The Lakers had 72 days a full off season if you will right after winning the championship whereas the clippers they had i believe an extra two three weeks on top of that shit so in terms of physical fatigue who do you think's more exhausted and this isn't an excuse this is just trying to tell you hey this is the way shit is right now and coming into this game if you're a lakers fan you shouldn't have expected a goddamn win honestly but I just found it interesting that the Lakers kept at it pretty consistently. And a couple of cats that stood out to me tonight was Taylor Horton Tucker, uh, who, when being inserted into that lineup from the bench, he honestly was a momentum shifter. I believe it was in the second or third quarter, Vogel decides to put him in. And all of a sudden, the defense and the offense just had a new flair to it. And... I really like what I saw from THT, and if we can get that level of production and, and you know, momentum shifting, you know, especially in a situation where we're down by a boatload of points, that would be spectacular. I mean, consistently throughout the season. And again, this is a 72-game uh, season gauntlet, and, you know, one game, it, it's hard to determine where everything is going to go, but I really like what THT was able to show out with this game. Uh, Montres Harrell, who I know Lakers fans are very hesitant to just, yeah, the best, because he was in enemy territory for quite some time uh, in the Clippers. But I think Harrell had a pretty decent game, too, along with Dennis Schroeder, who was close to flirting with the triple-double tonight. All the rebounds he was getting, I thought, was spectacular, but as expected personally from what i saw as expected coming into this game and, and throughout the you know course of this game against the clippers 
there was a genuine concern with interior presence in my mind. And yeah, that we are missing in the form of guys like JaVale McGee, Dwight Howard, and they would certainly be a benefit at this point. But with what we had, the Lakers really did, you know, bring it close to, to a game that I honestly didn't think they were going to battle out towards the very end, but uh, they did. They did. And good for them, uh, for the Lakers to get that, I suppose, mentality rolling, and hopefully that can you know, translate into some wins down the line, especially with chemistry shit, which we've seen pay dividends last season. Uh, hopefully games like this can help boost our boys. But, I mean, essentially this game, I feel is a throwaway. I mean, most primetime games, I genuinely feel like that. I don't know why. Mainly it's because, okay, you got all these talking heads who are going to say all this stupid highlight shit. But it's the games like the weird fucking early evening games in, I don't know, Charlotte. The, the odd, random-ass games in Memphis. Or the godforsaken fucking game scheduled in Madison Square Garden to the goddamn Knicks. Um... It's, it's those kinds of grimy games where the Lakers are going to be favored by idiotic numbers of points. But you know the other team's going to be just as gritty, just as, you know, getting at it like you. Those are the games where I look at the character of this team. But game like this against the Clippers, man, the Clippers are overly emotional. They're rattled because they blew a 3-1 series lead in the fucking postseason. And they've never been to the fucking conference final. And so with all the overcompensation and all the bravado and hoopla for the Clippers, of course they're going to win. And for the Lakers, it's almost like, okay, cool. I mean, you're exhausted, you're tired, sure, and you just won... A championship 72 uh, 72 days ago you're just getting your ring so yeah i i don't really take a whole lot from this game other than all right clippers keep this going there's 71 more games and as for the lakers man there's 71 more games and just cross this shit off and let's move on to the next one right simple shit i mean i'm not getting too much into the nitty-gritty details of the game here because we all have eyes you can definitely go watch some highlights or a full game that's what I would absolutely recommend, especially if you want to see some uh, little bits and pieces, especially with this Clippers team, where I would tell you Nicholas Batum might be a really low-key great signing, uh, or was it a trade, if I'm not mistaken, but he might be a fantastic acquisition by the Clippers. Uh, personally, I didn't really see a whole lot from Luke Kennard, but... I like that I like that Batum move. I mean, Serge Ibaka is going to be... A bit of a nightmare for a lot of Western Conference teams to go up against. But, yeah, with the Clippers, yeah, sure, you got one good game. But you got 71 more. And then the postseason. So, with you guys, we know damn well none of this regular season shit means anything. We both know that. Uh, kind of the same thing with the Lakers, but in another perspective. Where, okay, man, you you did it last season. See if you can do it again. And you are going to have some new pieces. So, let's see how chemistry rolls from there. And if... The core guys of AD and LeBron James can get the best out of the best out of the guys and see where we can go from there. And I think Frank Vogel is still going to have a lot of critics, of course. I mean, this is the Lakers. We're the most story franchise in NBA history. And yeah, Celtics, I don't really know what else to tell you anymore. We are the most story franchise. I believe we are the most valuable franchise in the NBA, uh, bar none. Uh, I don't give a shit if the Knicks are in New York. That shit is a clusterfuck organization anyways but for the lakers i mean it, it comes down to can you replicate that same level of success uh last season to this season with new pieces and if you can great but you know yeah this is going to come at a price of all these talking heads talking all this nonsense and you just have to grind through it and tough it out and so from one Lakers fan, so other Lakers fans were stressing out about this shit. Like, ah, dude, relax. I mean, I'm not. I'm certainly not stressing out about this game. I came into this game fully expecting a loss. I said Lakers are going to lose by two, but they lost by seven, 116 to 109. But I'm okay with it because we're just still chilling with our ring. And you know Christmas Day is going to be more fucking important than this fucking bullshit. 
<laughs> I know I just said primetime games don't really matter, but we know goddamn well actual people pay attention to NBA on Christmas and for better or worse, I mean, players are more spiritually and more hyped up and active for Christmas games than any other game. So I believe this game showed a lot more positive if you're that kind of cat for the Lakers than anything else. But for me, I, I would just say kind of neutral. So let's move on to the next game on Christmas Day, and hopefully the Lakers grab a win there. So, boys and girls, that'll do it for me. Follow me at the Sky Lounge on all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily content. Let's go, Lakers. Now, fuck off. Ring 18 would be pretty fucking sweet, though. I'm just saying. <laughs>